Hi folks, welcome back. Today I want to take a look from a paper from the Symposium on Operating System Principles from a couple of years ago that looks at the design trade-offs between containers and virtual machines. And the authors in this paper are trying to build a system that gets the best of both worlds. So let's see what those trade-offs are and how they try to accomplish that. Now, we all know that containers have taken off in a big way recently with technologies like Docker and all the big vendors like Amazon and Google supporting them in their cloud offerings. There are three main reasons why containers have zoomed past virtual machines in popularity and deployment. And they all have to do with how lightweight containers are. Because they are lightweight, they boot up very fast, they use a small amount of memory, and you can pack a lot of them on one machine. And these are exactly the shortcomings of virtual machines. Virtual machines are heavyweight, or at least they're perceived to be heavyweight because they boot up an entire computer with its operating system. And so they take a long time to boot up, they use a lot of RAM because you're essentially emulating an entire computer in the virtual machine. And because of that, you can have fewer of them on one machine. So very briefly, in case you're not familiar, what's the difference between a container and a virtual machine? A virtual machine virtualizes the underlying hardware of a machine. The most popular examples of virtual machines are products like VMware or Zen or KVM and they basically give you a virtualized x86 machine on top of which you can boot any operating system. You could boot Linux or Windows into your virtual machine. On the other hand, containers virtualize at a different layer of the stack. They virtualize at the operating system layer. So a container is basically giving you one isolated slice of your operating system. That means containers on a Linux machine will only be able to run Linux workloads. You're not getting a virtualized machine, you're getting a virtualized slice of the operating system. So those sound like very compelling advantages in favor of containers. There is a problem, however, and that problem is security. It is much harder to secure containers than virtual machines. Why is that? because containers have a much larger surface area to secure, and that surface area is the system call interface of the operating system, Linux in this case. Linux currently has about 400 system calls, and the number of these system calls has only been growing over time. A virtual machine, on the other hand, can depend on hardware isolation mechanisms, like memory protection and CPU rings to guarantee that virtual machines are isolated from each other. That is a much smaller surface area to secure. And you can see this effect in the real world because containers over the years have had lots of security exploits. That's the trade-off we face. Containers are lightweight but very hard to secure. Virtual machines use more resources but are more secure. What the authors in this paper are trying to design is a system that has the best of both worlds, i.e. it has the isolation of virtual machines and yet is lightweight, so boots up quickly, has a small memory footprint. The goal is to have virtual machines that have the same footprint or about the same footprint as containers. So they boot on the order of milliseconds, they use on the order of megabytes of memory, and you can pack thousands of them on a modern server machine. This paper covers a lot of work, but I want to zoom in on two specific pieces. The first one is the author's analysis of what makes virtual machines heavyweight and they focus their work on Zen in particular, but the idea should apply to virtual machines in general. And the second contribution I want to look at is a tool called TinyX, which lets them construct 
very lightweight, stripped down Linux virtual machines. One of the biggest factors that makes virtual machines heavyweight is the size of the guest operating systems. If you look at even a small Linux distribution, it can run into the hundreds of megabytes and maybe even gigabytes. Containers don't have the same problem because they share the underlying kernel memory and their root file systems can be pretty small. Which means really that the biggest thing you can do to make virtual machines lightweight is to strip down the guest operating system. And the observation the authors make here is that most virtual machines are designed to run one specific application or one specific workload. And if you strip down the entire guest to just what that specific application needs, you can make it pretty small. One approach to doing this is to build a unikernel. This is where you link your application with the kernel and your virtual machine directly boots into the application and runs only that application. I've covered unikernels in a video in the past and I'll link to that in the description. Now, unikernels really give you very compact virtual machines that are very stripped down, they boot up very fast and use very little memory. The downside is that developing unikernels takes a lot of time and effort. What the authors are exploring in this paper is a middle ground where they're building a tool called TinyX that strips down a guest Linux OS to just what the application needs. This is not going to be as optimized as a unikernel, but it won't be a full-blown general purpose guest operating system. It'll be somewhere in the middle. I won't go into all the details, but at a very high level, what TinyX does is take a specification of all the dependencies for a particular application that you want to run in the virtual machine. And these dependencies come in the form of a list of libraries and a list of Debian packages that your application depends on. And then it constructs a virtual machine and an optimized Linux kernel that is just enough to run your specific application. And this lets them construct virtual machines that are much smaller than typical Debian guest operating system virtual machines. And you can see that the VM constructed by TinyVM is in between a full-fledged guest operating system and a unikernel. It takes then about two seconds to create and boot into a full Debian guest operating system whereas the stripped down tiny VM takes less than a second to get created and boot into, and a unikernel just blows past both of them and is created and booted into in about 83 milliseconds. Compare this with Docker, which takes about 200 milliseconds to create a container, and then just another few milliseconds to start the workload, but the crucial bottleneck here is that for processes and containers, the startup time does not depend on how many processes or containers are already running on your machine. Whereas for virtual machines, the startup time goes up linearly depending on how many virtual machines are already running on that server. And if you look at the overhead of Zen virtual machines, as you instantiate more and more guests on the server, you see that the vast majority of overhead goes into the Zen store and device creation. Now, what is the Zen store? The Zen store is a central persistent store of metadata related to virtual machines. It keeps track of what virtual machines are running, what virtual devices they have, and so on. And this central store and interacting with it becomes a bottleneck as more and more virtual machines are instantiated on a machine. And I won't go into this in too much detail, but the authors have designed a new architecture around Zen, which they called Light VM. And this bypasses the Zen store altogether because it was such a big bottleneck. And to wrap up the paper, let's look at some use cases where lightweight virtual machines like this would be really useful. 
With things like 5G, mobile operators have started proposing an architecture which they call mobile edge computing, where they want to run computation much closer to their subscribers around the cellular base station. And for these kinds of workloads, because users move in and out of a particular cell, it's important to have very lightweight virtual machines that can be instantiated very quickly. So these kinds of virtual machines would be a great fit for mobile edge computing. Another area where these lightweight virtual machines can be really useful is to implement function as a service features. These are things like AWS Lambda. Here you need something that can be instantiated really quickly on demand and then do a computation and exit. Clearly, if you want to do this in a full-blown virtual machine, that would take too long. In fact, if you look at the recent Firecracker paper from Amazon, that goes in the same design direction as the authors here. So that was a quick look at a paper that explores some of the design trade-offs between containers and virtual machines and tries to build tools and optimize virtual machines so that you can have very lightweight virtual machines that have the security advantages of virtual machines as well as the lightweight, quick boot up and low memory footprint advantages of containers. I hope you enjoyed that and I will see you next time. Thank you very much.